Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Virtual Ninja Show. My name is Heike and today we are talking about near real-time detections and I have Christos with me. Christos, please introduce yourself. Hi Heike, thank you for having me in the show. I'm a big fan of the show and I'm happy to be presenting with you today. Uh, so my name is Christos, I work for the product group team, a member of the customer experience engineering team and my focus is on Microsoft 65 Defender platform. Perfect. And that's why I have you here. So um, let's quickly uh, summarize what is near real-time detections mm -hmm. before we actually go and look into the various things that we need to know about it. So real-time detections are a new feature within our custom detection feature. Uh, it has been a feature which has been very frequently asked by customers and partners. And it is a, a new schedule, let's say, for uh, running custom detection queries in the customer environments. Okay, thank you. So I think before we get into that, you mentioned a few other things. So detections in general, custom detections. Yes. So do you want to educate us what are custom detections and how do you create them and yeah, what's needed? Sure. So custom detection rules are rules that you can design and tweak uh, by yourself using advanced hunting queries. Uh, these rules uh, will let you proactively monitor various events and system states, including uh, potential breach activity and misconfigured endpoints. Uh, you can set them to run at regular intervals uh, and generate alerts and take response actions automatically whenever there are matches uh, on your uh, rules. Great. So uh, what I understood so far before you go into the demo is basically you have an advanced hunting rule that you not just click now on run query, but then basically schedule it to run on a regular basis. That's correct. Yes. Let's go. Let's have a look. Great. Uh, what I have here is in the uh, hunting page, I've created a very simple query. I'm using the device file events table and I'm looking for any file activity involving a file name called workup2.exe. So I in our example, this is a suspicious applic uh, application. I want to get an alert every time this file pops up in any device. So yeah, for everyone, this is a demo tenant. So things are not always just seven days old. Um, so that's why we changed it to 30 days. That's right. Uh, so I have some results. And now that I have confirmed that I have some activity from for this file in my environment, I will create a detection rule. So I can click on create detection rule. I will say my suspicious app, and then I can configure it to run every hour, every three hours, 12, 24 hours, or near real time now. Let's say I want to create it as a near real time detection. I will give it a title. I will pick the severity, I will choose the category. Mm -hmm. And on the next step, I'll write a small description here. This is a device-related alert. So I will get my alert to be generated based on the device ID. Before you keep going, what is the difference? Can you explain this to me? So what is the device ID? What is the device name? How does it relate? I just want to understand. Right. So. In different scenarios, so when you are querying, for example, different tables, you may be querying email activity or logon activity. So in based on the type of alert that you want to, uh, to create and take action in the next step, uh, you can associate the alert with the entity, which is the one that is uh, implicated in the incident, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. in my okay. case, it's uh, only device-based. So I'm associating with a device ID and I can also associate it with a device name. And at the next step, I can choose to take actions. So since I'm taking action against the device, I can choose to isolate, run an AV scan, run an investigation on the device, etc. So all the actions that we know as manual actions, we can also automate them in the custom detection itself. So in this example, I will not take any action and I will target all devices in my custom detection and then mm -hmm. create it. 
And then, of course, there is somewhere an overview of all the custom detections that someone created to go back and maybe edit it or something. That's right. So once you go to the custom detection rules uh, right below the advanced hunting, you can get a list of your all your custom detections. So when you click on it, you can choose to run it immediately instead of the schedule that you have created for it. You can edit this, the configuration, so you can change the schedule, you can change the description, you can change the alert name, uh, or you can modify the query itself so that it runs differently next time that you are running it. Okay, thank you. So I also saw um, that in this case you use the device file events table, which belongs to an endpoint schema or something. So how is that? Like, do you have access to all of them, or do you need specific permissions? Um, how are the tables related to the queries you can run? So to create a custom detection rule, the query that you are running within that rule has to return some uh, specific columns. So uh, by minimum, you will need to have uh, the timestamp in your uh, hunting results. Uh, you should have the report ID, which enables lookups of the original records. And one of uh, a number of columns that you can identify specific devices, users, or mailboxes. So for example, You, might, you may need to have device ID, device name. Uh, if you are looking to create a custom detection for mailboxes, then you will need to have recipient email address field or the sender form address field, etc. Uh, we have a comprehensive list of uh, requirements on uh, the custom detections in our uh, public documentation. Okay, so this is the fields that you need to include in your query for the results. But in order to access device file events um, and see the schema and all of this. This how is is this also um, related to roles that someone has um, permissions to access? Right. To to run advanced hunting queries and custom detections, you need to have a specific permission in our unified uh, RBAC model. Okay. Plus to the tables, right? That's correct. Okay. So that means if I don't have the Defender for Endpoint permissions, I don't see the schema and the tables and nothing. I just see whatever. That is other. correct. Yes, yes. If your permission do not give you access to the to device uh, data, then you will not see them. So, okay. So we looked into how to create a custom detection. You actually already selected that near real-time detection. So can I create that for every single query? Are there specific items um, that are more suitable than others like how when do you use it and what can it be used for right so near real-time detections uh, at the moment can be used for uh, device and uh, email events so anything that is generated from defender for endpoint and for defender for office so then the relevant tables uh, for defender for endpoint and defender for office can be used to create custom detections with a near real-time schedule. Another thing that it is important to know about custom uh, near real-time detections is that uh, you need to follow some rules. So, for example, uh, in the near real-time detections, you cannot create a rule which is joining uh, tables. So you need to be uh, creating your query uh, addressing a single table and not joining or doing unions on tables. So you should be based on, on one oh, table right. only. Uh, there are also operators uh, which may not support uh, near real-time detection at the moment. So for example, this query that I have created here, I have made some comments. So my query at the top is looking for work up to exe but it is using a has any operator normally i would use an, the has any operator to declare more than one string right so maybe i was looking for work up to work up three work up four etc uh, but now for the sake of the demonstration i just i have one string here in the has any uh, operator now has any is currently not supported for near real-time detection so if you try to create a, a near real-time detection containing that operator it will not give you the option to schedule it for near real time. However, 
if you change your operator to uh, to equals, so if you're looking explicitly for the workup to exe string, then your custom detection query will be eligible for uh, near real time detections. Okay, so now I'm confused because I mm -hmm. think you created that rule, you selected near real time. Then we went into custom detection rules, looked into them, and you went to modify uh, the query, and then you're back where you are. And now it shows it's not supported. So what was the original query that you created? So the original query that I created was this one. Ah, okay, okay. So I missed something here. Yes. So the original query contains uh, is, the, is using the equal operator. Okay. So, and I would assume that, of course, in our documentation, we have listed what currently is supported, how they can run. That's that's correct. So, uh, in our link for uh, custom detections, uh, we also have a section on near real time that we uh, added when we introduced the feature to public preview. And uh, there you can see what are the limitations in terms of operators, and there is also a comprehensive list of operators that cannot be used. Um, however, it is important to, to note that we are uh, we keep working on adding support for all, all more operators, so make sure that you are staying tuned with uh, our documentation. <laughs> yes, yes. I was just about to say, I mean, it's now in public preview. It was a highly requested um, addition, and of course, step-by-step, um, we will add more. Mm -hmm. um, so when would you recommend to run near real-time detections versus scheduled to run every hour, three hours? Is there like something that you can recommend or what you see that our customers do? That's a good question. For customers who have been using custom detections um, uh, in the last several months, uh, It is also important for them to know that the ones that have already scheduled for running every hour, uh, it is uh, e very easy for them to change them to near real-time detection as long as the detection supports it based on the structure of the query. Mm -hmm. So for the customers who have all, already created a custom detection, uh, it's a good idea to go back to those detections and uh, uh, change their configuration to run in near real-time. Uh, now, what uh, customers usually do is, and what we recommend is that you execute your uh, custom detections uh, based on how quickly you want to be alerted uh, on, on a potential suspicious activity or a potential incident. For example, if you just want to have an alert once a day or twice a day about a uh, an alert which is only for compliance reasons and you will investigate it, but it's not something uh, that you need to address immediately, you would configure your detection to run every eight hours, for example, or once a day. Uh, mm -hmm. Now for things that are something that you need to investigate in your security operations team, then you would schedule them to run every hour or now uh, you can schedule them uh, as near real time. And it's probably also really case by case, right? So it's possible, especially, let's say, this my apps that you just um, created. Maybe it's a very bad threat currently out there. So you really want to see every time it shows up again. Um, and then once it gets, you know, less and less, you might just block it and it's done. But um, I think it's also maybe, of course, awareness, um, depending on how urgent a certain threat is. Um, currently out there or targeting your Yes, network. that's that's a very good point. And uh, actually, this is, if you combine the schedule with a response action that you, you can automatically take, uh, the introduction of near real time is also bringing another benefit because now it's not only about detecting something quickly, but also responding to it. So, for example, instead of... Yeah. Taking action, for example, uh, isolating a device every uh, every hour. Uh, now you can do it in in real time. <laughs> yeah, you can isolate it like every tick 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 always again. The user will be happy. Exactly. Every time we get a telemetry that triggers your detection, we we take the action immediately. Okay. So now that we know all about it, um, so this 
custom query would not run in near real time uh, because it tells you, sorry, it's not supported. You should use it differently. What did it change? Like um, you try to save it under near real time or it wasn't even giving you an option. So how does that look like? Okay, so we will use this query as an example for which we already have a custom detection for it. So when you go to your custom detection and you try to edit it, you will see that in the frequency options, you do not have the near real time detection available. Yeah. Okay, so for everyone, if you try to do this, you are using a wrong schema or you're doing some cross table, so you can only use one specific, like one table in one query, or you're using operators that are not yet supported. So whenever you don't see the near real time, some of that um, is currently not yet supported. That's correct. Good. So then how do we get that back? <laughs> now I'm going to fix that, that simple rule that I created. So I will cancel the editing and then I will go to modify my query. This will get me to my editor and then I will replace my query. And instead of having the has any operator, I'm using the equal operator. So now when I go back to view my rule, and edit it. So you need to save it first? No, no, because once you click on the view rule, it is saved in your custom detection. So now you can see that the continuous option is now showing up. It showed suddenly up, so you don't even have to create it new. So that's awesome. So that's what you said. Also for customers, they should go back and look into their existing mm -hmm. custom detections if there's any that they might like to change to near real time, and they can just go back. And uh, yeah, so yeah. That, it's awesome. Now, from now on, if this file shows up on any of my environment, it will automatically create a new detection. And I saw this earlier when you click on your detection rule and you open it in the side pane, I think it showed you what actions has been taken and there was like nothing in the last uh, seven days, I would assume, or what is that? Yeah. So. Going back to uh, our demo, what you can do is you can open the detection rule page and then you can see if it has been triggered recently and uh, against uh, which devices, what were the alert IDs that are associated with that rule. So you can mm -hmm. also see wh which actions have been taken. In my case, I don't have any actions because I did not choose to take any action. Mm -hmm. But you can pivot directly to the, to the alert page by clicking on the alert that triggered and it will take you immediately back there. That's awesome. Thank you. Good. So I think it's a very simple topic, so not too complex, but super important for people to understand um, how they can use near real-time detections in custom detections now. And um, yeah, any, any last recommendations, words from you, Christos, before we move on? One thing that I forgot to mention about near real-time detections is that once they run uh, on your environment or when you convert a detection from every one hour to near real-time, uh, the detection has no impact on your um, query usage. So if you go to the query usage report, uh, so here I can see my queries that run on a hourly schedule and the near real-time ones will not have an impact in, in the usage. So you will not see them creating any impact on your query report. So are we basically asking customers to change and use near real-time as much as possible? Yes, we would really recommend customers to go review their custom detections, uh, check for the ones that make sense to convert to near real-time because based on the threat model that the customer has or the way they operate, it may not make sense. Uh, but if it makes sense, it is a great idea to uh, go back to them and convert them to near real-time. Okay. So and for everyone, we mentioned it before, um, it's currently in public preview. So you have to have that toggle on that in your tenant, the public preview features are available so um, or check out of course our blog space or the monthly news the defender news uh, when this moves into general availability because maybe you're restricted to use um, public preview features in your production environment 
So Christos, I think that was great. I think um, I learned again new stuff, which is always good. And I hope uh, the audience out there as well. So thank you so much for being my expert on today's show. And for everyone out there, thanks for tuning in and see you next week when it's the last episode. Mm -hmm.